I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and this is Equal Entertainment. The music industry and fans are mourning the death of legendary singer Tony Bennett. Bennett was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 2016, but he continued to perform and didn't go public with the diagnosis until 2021. Bennett made more than 150 recordings and sold an estimated 60 million records. He served in the military, helping liberate a German concentration camp, and was active in the civil rights movement. Bennett was 96 years old. The Advocate Channel's Stephanie Elam looks back at the crooner's eight-decade career. A legend on stage, Tony Bennett's career spanned more than 70 years. He was opening up for Pearl Bailey when Bob Hope discovered him in 1949 in a New York City club. You know, it's been about 16 years since I discovered you singing in a Greenwich Village nightclub. How come this is your first appearance on my television show? Well, I've been waiting for you to make good. <laughs> Bennett had a string of hits in the 50s, but the best was yet to come. He won his first Grammy Award in 1963 for his song, I Left My Heart in San Francisco, and performed it on The Judy Garland Show. I left my heart. The crooner's unique voice and timeless style helped him win a total of 19 Grammys and two Emmys throughout his career. Tony Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe the best pop singer in the whole world. You know, I asked Sinatra, why do you wow. think we stayed around so long? And uh, he said, because we stayed with good songs. But the classics weren't always hits. In the 70s, Bennett found himself without a recording contract. He was in debt and battling a drug problem. I realized that I thought I was doing well with the drugs, and it, I really wasn't. That's when Bennett's son Danny stepped in as his manager. Bennett re-signed with Columbia Records and began to revitalize his career. It was then he discovered a new audience, the MTV generation. Look, it's Tony Bennett. Hey, good to see you. I had The Simpsons. We did a commercial for MTV, and they liked it so much, they gave me an unplugged uh, special and that one album of the year. Fly me to the moon. Bennett went on to collaborate with singers like Amy Winehouse for Body and Soul at number one on the Billboard 200 chart with his Duets 2 album. Several years later, he toured with Lady Gaga to promote their album Cheek to Cheek. Yet Bennett's talent went beyond singing. He was an accomplished painter with artwork at the Smithsonian. I have a charmed life because I've always known what I wanted to do. The son of a grocer and a seamstress, Bennett married three times and had four children. He and his third wife, Susan, founded the Exploring the Arts Foundation and opened the Frank Sinatra School of the Arts in New York. Everybody has a dream or hope that something's going to work for them. And then when it happens, it's a great joy. Bennett was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 2016, but with the encouragement of his doctors, kept doing what he loved best, singing. How do you keep the music playing? He cut his final album, Love for Sale, with Lady Gaga. And performed with her one last time in two sold out concerts for his 95th birthday. He's my musical companion. And he's the greatest singer in the whole world. Aired on CBS, it was a moving tribute to a musical legend. Your golden sun. The mastermind behind the new Barbie movie quietly welcomed a baby boy four months ago. Director Greta Gerwig is now a mom of two. Gerwig and her husband Noah Baumbach revealed the news to LUK, and she says the baby is a little schmoo and a wise little boy. Barbie is now in theaters. There's an update in the Tupac Shakur murder probe. Police recently searched the home of Dwayne Keith Davis, who is also known as Kef D. The stepbrother of rapper Tupac Shakur is hopeful that his stepbrother's decades-old murder will be solved. He also says he's not surprised because Kef D's involvement was theorized about for years. It's been 27 years, so it doesn't seem that there's been a lot of zeal or, or robust investigation of this case. This theory 
hasn't been looked into for 27 years. Why? Uh, my family's been traumatized. My sister, my, 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 my daughter, my nieces, my nephew, every, we all been traumatized waiting, you know, uh, a faintly passed away waiting for something to happen, to, for someone to be proactive enough to, to take action. Trans filmmaker and activist Zachary Drucker has added another project to her extensive portfolio called Queenmaker, the making of an it girl. It examines the height of Manhattan's socialite elite in the 2000s and one anonymous blogger's ploy to infiltrate the groups. I found the film really fascinating because I went in, you know, it was just like a walk down memory lane for me, some of remembering that era. And then, oh, here's this kind of a different uh, angle when yeah. it's discovered that or revealed rather that there's this popular blog and first you find out who that person is. And then eventually uh, we find out that that person is a trans woman who really kind of infiltrated that world. And you, your body of work from Transparent, Lady in the Dale, The Stroll, like, you have been integral in reshaping narratives around trans folks in Hollywood because you're taking control of that narrative for one thing. And I wonder, would you talk a little bit about the power in doing that? Oh, <laughs> that's a big question. <laughs> Sorry. And a, and a big responsibility. And a good <laughs> responsibility, I think, um, comes great accountability. And I, I really, feel like a messenger on earth for stories that are coming into the world with or without us and finding a way and to be a channel for those voices mm. and for the many people, you know, both in my communities and in all marginalized communities to feel like their stories matter and they're heard and they've mm. been seen and immortalized in the annals of cinema history. And to know that um, you can be a part of something that will outlive you, something mm. that will outlive your body, that you can leave mm. breadcrumb yeah. trails for future generations and um, remind the world that we exist, we've always existed, we always will. And in this trans life for many years, since the George W. Bush era, and um, it's shifted and changed and morphed so many times that I don't ever expect it to be one thing. And I'm very conscious of how precarious our rights are, how precarious our democracy is right now with one political party um, trying to overthrow and dismantle it um, and, uh, you know, taking clear aim at LGBTQIA people, women, immigrants, all people of color. It's a time for us to take personal responsibility and to mm -hmm. be engaged and to support um, black and brown trans women as the epitome mm -hmm. of helping out, you know? What's summer without some good music and reading to go along with your favorite activities? President Obama agrees, and he's curated a summer playlist and book list that's a mix of old and new. He's got everything from new indie music to classic rock, along with older hip hop staples and new school hits. As for reading, he's recommending thrillers, nonfiction books on important issues, and several other genres. The former president drops these lists for the summer and holidays. Head over to his socials for the full list. You can watch the Advocate channel live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For the Advocate channel, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. Thank you for watching.